Hi guys, welcome to the MD80 My Rotate Sim, and this is in X-Plane 10. Uh, released yesterday, uh, one of the most highly anticipated releases for X-Plane 10 in quite some time, and uh, with good reason in many respects, as we shall see as we go through this. Now, I'm going to do this review in three parts. Uh, the first part is going to be uh, looking at the outside, the next part is going to be looking at the inside, and then the final part is doing the actual flying. The reason why I'm breaking it down into three actual videos, normally I follow that routine for my reviews anyway, but the reason I'm breaking it down into three actual videos is because there's quite a lot of depth to this aircraft. Now I'm not talking about complexity, as in systems complexity, PMDG style I'm talking about depth, I'm talking about looking at areas where the developers have, have gone that extra step, that extra mile, and there are a lot of places where they've done that. And you can see just from the offset, look at, look at the liveries, the liveries are worn. These were tired working birds. Um, these have done a lot of hours in the air. Uh, from the original DC-9s these were developed from, they went through the DC-9 series, the MD-80s when it became McDonnell Douglas as opposed to Douglas Corporation. Um, and then eventually Boeing took them on as a, as a form in the Boeing 717. But this is one of the most uh, famous sort of uh, eras of that aircraft line, the MD-80. That lineage um, and it's also one of the most interesting. So why am I particularly, I suppose, yes, particularly excited about it? Well, there's, if you like, there's eras in uh, airliners. So you've got the steam gauge era, uh, aka the Fly JSIM 732, 727, that kind of era, where the most advanced box of tricks you may, may get would be either VOR to VOR navigation, uh, possibly some uh, INS initial nav stuff thrown in. If you like, at the other end of the extreme, you've got the Airbus A320, lots of automation, uh, lots of good cockpit ergonomics and flows and systems. Boeing are up there at the moment. However, Boeing obviously transited through the whole thing. So, you know, when you look at them in, in terms of their progression from the 727 or the 707 all the way through to the 787, you can see that sort of progression, that continual drive. However, uh, there is, throughout most of that, there's a common Boeing logic, and there's a, certainly an Airbus logic. Well, the Douglas uh, Corporation developed its own cockpit style, its own flair in cockpits, its own uh, reason for doing things. When uh, McDonnell Douglas came into, uh, into being and had the MD-80 series, they, uh, they obviously built on that. And one of the reasons why I like this, we'll just pop into the cockpit quickly, one of the reasons why I like this is uh, I like airliners that you get involved in, not just a couple of push-button exercises where we actually have to do something. Be our airline pilot, our airline captain. Now you can see that we've got uh, concessions here uh, to the sort of uh, 90s, 80s, 90s with our EFIS screens, two EFIS screens. Um, but you can also see, very similar to a 757, we've got the steam gauges around the outside. It's not a fully uh, automated cockpit, because here's your flight mode enunciator up here in terms of uh, your various modes for your automatic flight systems. And you've got an FMC down here. Um, all reasonably common fare thus far. However, then what we do is we look at where it's got the hallmarks of uh, the Douglas stroke McDonnell Douglas company. Um, and this is one of the areas where it interests me and intrigues me, is we go into from fairly modern, not current, but fairly modern, if you like, last generation, or maybe the generation before now, this is sort of uh, 737 classic, maybe a little bit before that. Um, then you go to your McDonnell Douglas with your poor ergonomics here, look how you've got your fuel cutoff levers, uh, black against black, not easy to find in the event of a fire, etc, etc. So... Um, you know, again, it, it's it's not the greatest ergonomic mess here with switches hidden in amongst it and all sorts that are not readily visible, um, even in lighting. We will go into lighting in a, in a different stage uh, of the review later on. But fundamentally, you know, it's kind of like uh, the new against the old. And then you look up there and you go, what the heck? Uh, the, the logic here is all over the place. And this is one of the joys with this airliner, is you have to learn about the airliner. It's not just a case of going through some uh, flick switch flow charts. Uh, you actually have to learn about the airliner. Now, I mentioned logic. Uh, this panel here. Most people are familiar with uh, the logic of most autopilots. This is not Boeing logic. This is not Airbus logic. This does its own unique things in its own unique ways. So this is one of the things I'm saying with this aircraft. This is why it excited me. Not because of it being a massively high fidelity PMG, PMDG style aircraft. 
but because the era that they've chosen, the model they've chosen, the blend of technologies they've chosen is just absolutely spot on for involving the pilot or the aircrew or the operator. It's just absolutely superb. So that's why I'm excited about this. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the outside. So back outside, the astute amongst you will know that I've changed the lighting a little bit here. Just move the shadow around, change the time of day. Uh, the reason for that is I want to show the lighting effects. So the only way I can do that is to have the light coming at the aircraft from an angle. Okay, so 3D modelling then. 3D modelling, where do we go with this really? Well, the obvious thing is to have a look at the shape as a whole. And you've got the right sort of uh, appearance in terms of nice curvature and shape of the fuselage as a whole. You've got this lovely panelling effect, which is prevalent with the, the Douglas range of aircraft in terms of DC-9 MD-80 around here. You can see the stitched panel network of all of these small panels, uh, the eyebrow windows and everything around here. The effect in terms of the overall fuselage, fuselage shape is just absolutely superb. Really, really nice. Uh, you can see where the light dances off it. You can see it just around here, look, and you can see how it changes. It goes across the windows, it goes across these bits here. The whole uh, reflection, the, the colouring up on here, the, the smoothness of the surface is really, really nice. Uh, likewise, you can see the way the shadows come across the wing surface, and as I move this, you can see the light changing on the, on the profile of the wing here. Look at that. So in terms of the overall sort of shape, the light tells you a lot and the light tells you that they've pretty much got it right. So yeah, it, it's, it's beautiful to see that that element um, has been sort of put into line very, very nicely. And you can see that actually the, the way the panel lines line up and the fuselage and the 3D shaping, it's all very, very good. It's all crisp, clean, deliberate, there's, there's no sort of fluffiness or mess around it you can see around here where the the join is for the or the hinge area is for the elevators i should say it's it's really really nice now a lot of detail gone into here when you see the static wicks these things are fully 3d modeled individually they're not just hanging off uh, the elevator you can also see they're at an angle so they've paid attention to the fine detail of this uh, likewise you can see as i move the uh, well i'm not going to call it the elevator it's an elevator tab um, and I'll ex actually I'll explain a little bit about that now. In terms of 3D modelling, I did what we all do when we first get this thing. I get it out of the pack and I look at it and I go, all right, let's wiggle the controls around. What the heck is going on here? Uh, spoilers. Surely spoilers are uh, simply hydraulically powered bits of kit. Well, yes and no. In most aircraft they are. Let's just get a better, better position for this. Let's zoom right into the spoilers. Okay. Spoilers in this aircraft, you can see... We haven't got much in here in the way of jacks, hydraulic jacks, because one of the things with the spoilers in this air aircraft is they are actually linked to the controls. I had a good read through the control uh, system uh, manual, not the one from the uh, not the one from uh, Rotate Sim, but the actual one that, that can actually be got fairly readily on uh, online. Um, and there's a lot of uh, old airliner here because a lot of these controls still have the me mechanical mandrolic control linkages, be it uh, torque tubes, be it uh, push rods, or whether it's cable or whatever. So consequently, a lot of the flying surfaces, even though they can be hydraulically assisted, they are manually acti activated. Uh, so originally, when I saw that, I thought, oh, you know, what's going on here? These things do actually have a mechanical link. Uh, direct to the control column. Uh, they also have a hydraulic actuation, hydraulic assistance, however there is a mechanical linkage as well. Likewise, this was one of the areas where I thought what the heck is going on here, because this outline here is the aileron. I thought, well, surely that's just the trim tab. Yes and no. Um, there's two little sections here, one of which is connected permanently to the controls. Now, those who are involved in general aviation will know about uh, anti-balance tabs, trim tabs, and the various control mechanisms you can use to assist you with the, the, the sort of, if you like, the force required or the force exertion to move an elevator or an aileron. This isn't too dissimilar. In effect, what happens is we have um, two control mechanisms on the aileron, not just one. Now, actually, what I'll do is I'll go to the uh, I'll go to the tail to demonstrate this. So let's just go over here. 
what we've got is a much larger elevator than these little panels. This is a very large elevator and as a result it's quite difficult to move on its own. Now yes we've got hydraulic assistance but one of the things that we did say with this is that it has mechanical reversionary controls. It has basic mechanical controls linked. So they're not powerful enough if you didn't have the hydraulics to operate this so what you need to do is you need to in effect treat these as almost an elevator trim tab and these are used to fly the elevator itself into the right position so you've got your tail section here what happens when I want to go up well I want this whole tail plane to go down the way it goes down is by this stay stationary this section lifts up however it's not connected directly by cables to my controls I need to fly this up so when I pull back you'll see that actually the trim tabs go down consider this as a wing in its own right that's the same as a normal uh, elevator then so that wants to go up well of course it's hinged uh, or it's got an axis, po access, axis here so it doesn't physically go up it moves up and uh, what we might try and do is see if we can actually get that demonstrated in flight it's hard to explain but when I first looked at it I thought what on earth is going on with the controls Actually, they've simulated the controls very, very well. Uh, it doesn't really make much difference in flight. It's not something where you go, oh, wow, feel the difference of that. But that shows the attention to detail. It would have been very easy just to model this as an elevator moving. What they've done is they've correctly modelled the, the, the elevator panels here moving, which would then fly the elevator into the right place, which in turn, with the, uh, the horizontal stabiliser section here, would give you the control response that you want very very clever same thing down here you know normally um, if I put my aileron to the left my stick or my yoke to the left this wing would go down it would go down by the aileron lifting up okay but if you notice this section goes down because it's going to in effect fly the aileron up really really clever 3d modeling look at the shape at the end of that wing what a complex shape for the developers Big bugbear for me, really big bugbear. Happens a lot in uh, FSX P3D. Lights that don't fix to their attachment points properly. Let's just do this. Uh, let's put a whole load of these on. Some of them aren't going to come on, but most of them should. I tell you what, the system logic, the sheer number of times I've gone up here to try and look for the lights when they're all along here. Uh, actually, it makes sense because if you're flying around, you're not having to take your eyes up here, but. Um, yeah, number of times I've gone, landing lights, ah, oh, what? Um, yeah, let's just pop outside again. Do, 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 do. Okay, so lights. Little oddity here, um, it has been pointed out on the, uh, the forums to, uh, to the guys that rotates him. White light, red shadow, red reflection here. So, yeah, bit of an odd one, but there we go. Um, at night, one of the things you will see with the nav lights is the uh, the ground is lit up green on this side, red on the other side, um, so you get that sort of reflective element. But one of the things that really bugs me is when the attachment point for the light is not where the light is. But you can see they are here, particularly where the uh, the anti-collision lights are. Um, so yeah, the the actual attention to detail in terms of lights, you can see here. This. Uh, this light here is absolutely spot on but more importantly what you see is as you move around you can see the light comes on and comes off where it should be doing uh, really impressed with the lighting effects in X-Plane X-Plane's always known for its lighting effects but when you look at the, uh, the landing lights really really nice effect there moving on to things like aerials and the more mundane things if I press that I can then press that um, all modelled in 3D very very well modelled um, you can see that uh, the GPS aerials and so on and so forth, the various holes one would expect to see are modelled and rendered in 3D um, exactly as you would want to see. Um, again, the, the level of 3D modelling around here is very, very nice. As you look into the engine, you can see the fan blades uh, at the N1 stage. Really, really nice modelling. Likewise, you can see that uh, as I move round, actually the engine with the thrust reversers have been beautifully modelled and shaped. Uh, you can see the strakes, the various strakes. There's a lot of aerodynamic fixes on this aircraft uh, in order to make sure that it actually behaved properly. The most notable one is the uh, strakes at the front under the nose. This thing lands really quite nose high. Uh, you can see with the engines quite far back, the, uh, the weight of the aircraft sits quite far back. 
look at the length of the nose you've got your center of lift your center of pressure will be about here um, and your center of gravity is generally forwards of that for an airliner for stability but you can see it's not going to be up here it's going to be quite far back here so there's a lot of aircraft stretches out to the front of this thing really really quite a, a unique design in some respects obviously there's other aircraft very similar so um, the uh, the British Trident for example the Fokker F70 and F100s are all the same um, you know the the CRJs are the same it's a very uh, common layout but this really long nose section kind of uh, is one of the distinguishing features when you then add in the strakes at the front uh, makes for a really interesting I wouldn't say attractive but for me it makes for a really interesting aircraft. So there's a lot of 3D features have been included in the aircraft itself. You can see the depth that's gone in with the rudder for example. It's not just simply plonked on there, it's actually been 3D modelled around all the hinges around here look and again as we look at it you can see that it's got the tab that goes in the opposite direction to the actual rudder to support you in terms of controlling it. Um, really nice animation. You can see how around the axis of the uh, of the axle there you can see the light changing as it goes through you can see absolutely gorgeous texturing now this aircraft gets me really excited for one reason and one reason alone commercial aircraft are not clean and pretty things they are functional things they do a very hard job they fly in all sorts of weather conditions and a lot of them are very old grubby and dirty this is one of the cleaner liveries dare I say it but it looks functional, it looks used, it, to me it looks excellent, it looks epic. Look at the, uh, look at the textures you get close to, you can see where all the, uh, the dirt has been, uh, been painted on. You can see the shapes of everything, it looks great. Really, really nice attention to detail in places as well. Well, I say in places, in a lot of places. Let's just go around here a bit. You see how this is a, a bit grubby, a bit dirty, but not too bad. See how this is uh, much dirtier. Have a guess which side the APU comes out on. APU exhaust, just there, look. No exhaust there. So that's the kind of thing that we're looking at. So we've changed livery, just so you can have a look at one of the uh, the other liveries from the 10. This thing is manky as heck. This is filthy. This is pure filth as far as an aircraft goes. Um, just look at the state of it. It's good for all the right reasons, but look down here. Look at it. Now, as I was saying before, the 3D shapes are absolutely perfectly cut in. There's no odd things here. It looks perfect uh, in terms of the, the contours. Um, even look at this. Even sections like this where they've got a strake. The strake itself is 3D. There's a gap here in the strake. Can you see that? Um, superb. Absolutely stunning. Nice chrome effect around the... Uh, around the nacelle of the engine, really nice, lovely shape to the windows. Um, it doesn't seem to, uh, to suffer as well, when you go quite close in, the shape here doesn't suffer, you can see inside, nicely modelled interior. Uh, we will have a look in in a minute, however, one of the things we're going to do is just going to have a look uh, as we look around here in terms of the textures before we go any further. Look at the state of that, look at it, look at it, that's manky as anything. But that's true to life. But when you zoom in, you can see actually the level of detail. We've still got our rivet lines coming down here, look. And this is just the wear and tear where the paint has worn off because uh, the techniques for constructing the aircraft when these things were made were not quite as advanced as they are now. And you can see to form this complex 3D shape just how many panels are involved. Um, you know, we, we didn't have the, uh, the sort of high-tech development we do now with synthetic materials. This was, a, this was an old-school development aircraft, and again, look at the crispness of how it goes from a smooth line here into a crisp, sharp line to meet with the, uh, to meet with the glazing sections. The glazing sections, all too often you'll find that these are not shaped, but look at this, this shape around the bottom here. Lovely 3D uh, external features of the pitot tubes, etc. Um, angle of attack sensor down here, look. Temperature probe. It's all there. And then you get to your 3D areas look at this we're going to have a look at the uh, at the 3d stuff on airborne as well because you need to see the uh, the retraction mechanism but you can see right into the cockpit it's all clear it's all crisp doesn't lose any detail doesn't lose anything like that um, as a whole i think you'd have to agree the 3d modeling is just absolutely epic 
this is where we start to have kittens. We're going to have a look under the wing. And I'll do it again when we're airborne because this is just stunning. We're used to seeing aircraft with highly detailed gear. Um, that's you know that's not something new. I can't actually go down anymore with the with the air thing at the moment. So we'll probably have to uh, take it airborne to have a look. But you can see the relatively high level of detail under here. Uh, we are familiar with this from a lot of aircraft, be it X-plane, P3D, whatever it might be. And we're used to seeing good 3D imaging of undercarriage, and we've certainly got that here. Look at this. Look at that. I mean, how can you not be impressed by that? Every single nut and bolt, everything. It's got the tiny manufacturer's uh, serial plates. Uh, it's got the over-centre linkage look. Nicely coloured, nicely toned, everything. It's stunning. Absolutely stunning. It's one of the best pieces of 3D modelling I have ever seen. I'm just... It's gobsmacking the way they've got the pipes curving and shaped around the oleo, the undercarriage leg. You've got the same sort of thing at the front, look, if I just zoom in from here, I'm not going to move. See how slender the actuating rod is for the uh, the undercarriage uh, door there. Look at it. The attention to detail is just mind-numbing. Absolutely mind-numbing. It would be very easy just to have a painted on bolt, but look at the fine detail here, the, the the deft touch in terms of making single bolts 3D. I mean, can you imagine how long that's taken? Into the wheel hub, you can see all of these individual fixings 3D, everything 3D. Just gobsmacking, gobsmacking attention to detail here. There's even more to come. Once we get airborne and we start using the control surfaces, you will see what I mean. Um, it's hard to express, that's just because of where the camera is, but it's hard to express the beauty of slats. I guarantee you will not have seen the like of it in any other aircraft. But every single thing that's modelled in 3D is just glorious. That is possibly one of the finest exterior models I have seen of any. Ignore the rubbish sort of shadowing effect that uh, the X-Plane 10 is struggling with here. Let's just back off a little bit and let's just see what happens. Let's uh, unpause there. Oh, smooth as anything. Even the door, the way the door... It's a plug door. Basically they are designed so that they're bigger than the aperture. You have to put them on the side to get through so that it aids with the pressurisation of the hull of the fuselage. That's epic. Right. Okay, so here we are, old school Delta livery, climbing out 2-3 right at Manchester. Uh, it's on autopilot, I've left the gear down. A couple of things I'm going to notice here. Nice bit of wing flex there, look. And also you can see where the flaps and the uh, various bits are here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom quite, uh, quite far in. And initially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to retract the gear and we'll see what happens with that. Lovely, slick, beautiful movement and then we get the clean lines. Now, if you remember, one of the things I said I was going to discuss was the uh, the flying surfaces. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'll probably uh, I'll pause at this point so we can have a good look around. So there we go, pause. So I've just quickly repositioned the camera um, because this one will afford me a good view as, it, as we fly. Uh, so let's just unpause it, see how we get on. And we will start the retraction process. Look at that mechanism there. Look at it. It's beautiful. That's flaps only. It's actually got an auto slap feature. That'll be us levelling off. And tuck them all away. And now the lines are clean as anything look. Still got our nice wing flex. Look, look at that. Whole thing's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Right. Let's just go under here again. And we're going to dirty the aircraft up, so slats only. Look, you can see the you can see the the real shape with all the flaps here. Let's come in here a bit, and we can watch the uh, watch the elevators and the flaps. So this section here is the flaps with the flap uh, hinges. These are the ele uh, ailerons here, and these are the aileron sections. If you remember, I mentioned the fact that some bits are directly controlled by cable, and others are hydraulically uh, 
assisted certainly from what I can see the documentation is not that great I think you need to do a full type rating course for it let's start with the first stage of flap coming down after that which there we go you can actually see the pitch of the aircraft changing as well next stage slats come out even further and you can see now you've got the gap for the airflow to go out between the uh, underside of the wing the airflow with the slats comes from the underside of the wing it comes up and around goes through that gap and comes out over the top of the wing to re-energize it but now what you can see is you can see how this area here with the flaps the slats aren't going to move anymore I don't think but the flaps are so what we need to do now we'll just pop the gear down oh look at that even this little link here look let me just do that again look at this little link and its movement that's stunning that is absolutely stunning let's continue with the flaps and you see now one of the things I was uh, expressing is the fact as we look in here this is now hollow this is 3D and hollow inside all of these bits I wish my camera work was better to do it justice you can see through the wing there now we get the the uh, slotted effect with an increased wing area and a big slot this hollow looking area here wing hinges are all uh, looking good the pivot points nice bit of wing flex lighting points as I say one of my big bugbears you've got the rear you've got the strobes and then you've got the nav light there and that's it that's full flap guys if you're not impressed by that Lord knows because I certainly am look at that you can even see the light look coming through the cabin from the other side well guys that I think you'll uh, you'll agree with me is a stunning stunning image and this is just a delight so what we're going to do next is the next video is going to focus on the inside um, when we look at the inside we'll be looking at all sorts of things in terms of systems what it looks like functionality all that kind of thing and then the final video is going to be taking this thing to the air so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you do don't forget to tick like share or subscribe uh, and i shall see you in part two enjoy <laughs>